We are in southeastern Kenya, in the Tsavo Reserve, the oldest and largest animal reserve in Africa. Here, 4,000 giraffes still roam the savanna and enjoy the grassy hillsides of one of the world's biggest sanctuaries, two million hectares. But this territory, so peaceful in appearance, is a paradise living on borrowed time. The giraffe population in Africa has declined by 50% in 30 years. Victims of poaching, the giraffe is viewed by local populations as interesting game, a kiloton of meat on two legs. But the main threats to this animal are more insidious. Little by little, the territory is being invaded by humans who settle here. Animals must retreat to ever smaller spaces and fight over resources such as prey, but also water, which is vital to all water that, due to climate change, has become more and more rare. With the first rays of sunshine, that is exactly what this giraffe is looking for, a watering hole. It's September, the end of the dry season. At four meters tall, this female has an unobstructed view. She leads the way for a small herd of Maasai giraffes. We recognize them by their coats, spotted the colors of the savanna. The patterns from one individual to another are never the same. Each giraffe has their own identity, like a zebra's stripes or a person's fingerprints. In their search for water, Giraffes travel in herds, often numbering from two to 10 individuals. We still don't know if the composition of these herds is random or if giraffes create social bonds. It hasn't rained on the reserve in two years. Kenya, like elsewhere in the Horn of Africa, regularly faces extreme climate phenomena. These lands are currently experiencing the worst drought of the last 60 years. The giraffe herd must travel tens of kilometers each day. The female leading them appears particularly determined. She has good reason. She is expecting a baby so finding water is crucial. Today she's lucky. The group has just found a stream that's not yet run dry. The female hesitates before lowering her head. When they drink, giraffes are extremely vulnerable. Like her congeners, this pregnant female knows the danger. Several zebras watch from a distance and wait to see if the area is safe. This male is taking a risk by drinking first. Reaching the ground is no small feat. In this bent over position, these giants are at the mercy of predators. A lion could jump out and attack their necks. The giraffe must first spread its legs so that his head can tip down five meters. You'd think the blood would rush to his head, but it doesn't. The giraffe's heart weighs 14 kilos, giving him the strength necessary to circulate blood through his two meter long neck. His heart rate is 170 beats per minute, more than double a human heart rate. The reason zebras frequent giraffes at watering holes is because they feel safe around them. Watch guards of the savanna, giraffes can see up to two kilometers in the round. The carcass of a young buffalo lies near the stream. And where there's a cadaver, predators are never far away.
these lions have also come to drink. There are more and more of them in the region. For the moment, they have found something to quiet their hunger, a lucky break for the giraffes. Lions are the main predator of large herbivores. Other predators include hyenas and wild dogs. Tsavo is the only place where these mainless and particularly aggressive lions live. It's their territory. giraffes has moved off. Away from the group, the female prepares to give birth. Since the mother gives birth standing up, the baby giraffe enters the world by dropping from a height of more than two meters. She carried him in her stomach for 15 months. Let's call this newborn Twiga, which means giraffe in Swahili. Twiga already weighs 50 kilos. It's difficult to find his balance. He has to get stable footing on his front legs before lifting up his still rigid backside. By licking him, the mother cleans her little one and urges him to stand up. His survival depends on it. The calf must stand on his own in less than an hour to reach his mother's teats. Otherwise, she will abandon him. And there's no time to lose. Predators are nearby. did it. But he's not out of danger yet. Ever since giraffes have been categorized as vulnerable on the long list of endangered animals, every birth is an event. For Cause everything changes and we are bound to A few days later, Twiga has already grown. He is now almost two meters tall. At age seven, he'll reach his adult size. It's not the same He still has his umbilical cord, but he's finally gotten control of his long legs. Giraffes have a particular way of walking. They have an ambling gait, meaning when they walk, they lift both hooves on the same side together, just like camels and bears. It's Twiga's first time meeting elephants, and not just any elephants. These are called red elephants, and they are only found at Tsavo. In the bush, elephants and giraffe rarely stray far from one another. Twiga watches this ritual with curiosity. It's quite a show. Elephants get rid of parasites by spraying themselves with this red dirt that contains laterite. It's what gives them this distinctive color.
These pachyderms are impressive. Instinctively, the giraffe calf keeps his distance. Something strange is happening. One, two, then three birds perch on the calf's fur. These are oxpeckers. They love eating all kinds of harmful insects that their host can't get rid of, like ticks, fleas, and lice. Twiga clearly isn't used to these strange birds yet. Twiga's mother likes them just fine. Over time, they've learned to live together. Adult giraffes live in symbiosis with passerines. In the end, they are quite useful. They also clean wounds, doing a very thorough job of it. Disputes over choice morsels are frequent. And after they've had enough of working, the giraffe provides an excellent system of public transportation. Soon after his birth, Twigga's mother must already leave him for a few hours. She needs to find food so she can produce milk. And for that, she must travel many kilometers. Twigga is still too young to follow her. But he won't be alone. This slightly older calf is waiting for his mother to return too. During the first months of their lives, giraffe calves live together like this, seemingly alone and at the mercy of predators. But in fact, an adult female is always just a hundred or so meters away to ensure their safety. She's like a nanny. These females have already had babies. And just like the males who live with the herd, these mothers take turns watching over the calves. From time to time, the giraffe nanny will lead the little ones around the savanna. It teaches them how to move as a group and is probably a way of misleading watchful predators. When they meet other giraffes, the herd grows larger for a few hours or a few days. Giraffes don't live by exact rules. Families, like herds, assemble and disperse depending on circumstances and opportunities to feed.